Okay, today I'm going to be seeing if you can actually break molecules just by putting them in the blender. Breaking molecules with physical force is difficult, not because it actually takes a lot of energy to break a molecule, but because you have to focus that energy into actually breaking the molecule and not just sliding it out of the way. Let me show you what I mean. For example, let's say I have some water here. And let's say I want to split this H2O up into hydrogen and oxygen just using physical force. Well, let's see if we can do it. So why can't you just cut up water molecules? Well, let's zoom in and see why we're not actually cutting anything here. So this is an analogy where I've zoomed in on the molecules of water so you can actually see them. So let's pretend I'm actually trying to cut one of these balls in half. Do you think it's possible to do it like this? So the reason I'm not able to cut them is because they just move out of the way. So that's what was happening with the water molecules is I can't cut them because they just move out of the way. The only way to cut it would be to restrain it on both sides. For example, I can actually cut one of these in half because I had a special tool that could hold it on both sides so that all of the force could go into cutting the molecule in half. But the problem is we don't have little tiny tools like this that can hold a water molecule and just cut it in half like that. The water molecule always just moves out of the way no matter how much energy you put into it. But what about if our molecules were much longer? So instead of little balls, they were more represented by big long strings. For example, I have here some speaker wire. And if I just press down on this, I can easily cut it with a knife. That's because it's so long that it can't slide out of the way, so the knife can press it against the table and cut it. And also, it kind of holds itself together so it can't slide out of the way. So the longer a molecule is, the easier it is to actually break the molecule. And one molecule that's really long is called polyethylene oxide, or polyethylene glycol, they call it. And this molecule is so big, it has a molecular weight of around a million. Compare that to water, which has a molecular weight of around 18. That means if you had a mole of the atoms, it would weigh a million grams, a million grams per mole. And a mole is a very big number. A mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of something. If you had a mole of pennies stacked end to end, it would stretch for a million light years. And polyethylene oxide does something really cool when you mix it with water. It becomes a self-siphoning fluid. Let me show you what I mean. Because the molecules are so long, they actually intertwine together and interact together so much that when you start to pour some of the fluid, it pulls the rest out of it. So watch, I'm barely gonna tilt it. and it just pulls the whole cup out. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna barely tilt it. And it just pulls the whole cup out. Now that we have some really big molecules, the question then is, what would happen if we were to put these molecules in a Blendtec blender? Would we be able to move it so fast and they'd get entangled so much that they would actually break apart? I'm going to be testing that by actually putting this in a blender and blending it up and then pouring it after and seeing if it actually doesn't have the same properties as before. So you saw that it has a self-siphoning property where it can pull itself out of the cup but I'm checking now if when I put it in the blender I can break it up enough so that after it's out of the blender and I try to pour it, it doesn't pour itself out of the cup anymore. Then I'll know that the molecules themselves have actually been broken up due to the blender. Let's check it out. Okay, let's get it into our blender. Nice, I don't even have to pour it. Now let's blend it up and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Let's let it go for a while. Okay, that was about 50 seconds in the blender. 
Let's see if we get any different properties. Okay, here we go. Let's try to pour it out and see if it has the self-pouring properties again. Okay, three, two, one. Not even close. So it no longer pours. It doesn't self-siphon or self-pour anymore. But this could be because of the bubbles. Let's see what happens when we actually let the bubbles all pop and get some pure liquid in there. Okay, let's try this out again now. So now I've waited for all the bubbles to pop, and now let's see if it's self-pouring anymore. No way. That feature is completely gone now. It's just like a regular liquid now. So it's completely lost the property to do that self-pouring that I showed before. So that means I completely destroyed these polyethylene glycol molecules. I cut them up into little pieces so they're no longer intertwined together and they're not interacting as much together because they don't have as long a chains. So this is pretty cool. That means that I essentially changed the molecular weight of this molecule just by putting it in a blender. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. And if you haven't headed over to theactionlab.com, head over there now and you can check out my subscription box. So this is a box where I send out quarterly experiments similar to the ones that you see me do on my channel where you can do them at home. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.